to those about to rock, get ready to roll with Better Buddies. Hello, and welcome back to Better Buddies. I'm your host, RJ, and with me this week, we have Calvin. Maybe not. No, I'm not here. Oh, there he is. <laughs> and James. Hello. I was waiting for James to interject something funny, but he didn't bite on the bit, so I, I just had to come oh, in. Oh, shit. Fuck. See? I'm off my rhythm. Oh. And that's how that's you know funny. Calvin's a true professional. James flubbed. Calvin let me pick it up, and he, mm. s- like, slam dunked it. He held the line. He committed <laughs> to the bit until it was no longer tenable. I lobbied it up, and he he put it, he put spiked it in. Hell yeah. The Better Buddies icebreaker for this evening is one that I think is a curious question. Uh, it, the question is, if you actually manage to capture a real cryptid, a Bigfoot, Yeti, the hodag, uh, a vampire, etc. Who would you call about it? Who would you call if you managed to capture an actual Ghostbusters cryptid? You call the Ghostbusters. Is that your final oh. answer? I'm gonna call it. The answer is Ghostbusters. It's fair. It's a very open-ended question. Uh, I would say my dad because he's like really into that stuff. He'd be very excited. Um, I get it like stuffed for him. Or whatever. <laughs> oh, You'd wow. have to kill it, then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like, is that okay to kill? Like, are there any cryptids that wouldn't be okay to kill, I guess? I mean, like, I guess, you, I, I guess it's more of a question of, are you going to be able to kill it? That's true. <laughs> like, is, it, is like, it murder to kill a vampire? They're technically sentient. Yeah. Well, I guess, like... Vampire rights. <laughs> would a vampire, like, is there, like, a limit on if you've been a vampire for like amount of time then you're no longer like oh, like you're there's like a half-life to your rights like yeah, the longer so, you're a vampire the less rights you have yeah so like being a human being where it's like you interesting at the point maybe maybe it's like if you've been a vampire for longer than you were a p- person then you lose that like mm-hmm. right because you were technically more vampire more human. than He's more vampire yeah. than man now. Uh, <laughs> what, if, what if they decrease at a like of at, at like the more blood you drink? So if you were able to survive oh. without drinking any human blood, then you haven't like then you lose less of your rights. Whereas it, the like for each person that you drink, you you lose more and more. Huh. Yeah, I guess like and would you treat that though as a murder or would you treat it as how would you treat that because they need to drink blood? It, blood they don't always have to kill people when they drink blood, do they? I mean, no, it not like varies. Also, like, people withdraw blood all the time from themselves. True. That's true. Yeah, they could go to, like, uh, but you can't just buy blood from a blood bank. I mean, That's what you think. Not yet. <laughs> this is fair. This is fair. I'm not connected with the Hollywood Illuminati. I don't know. Listen, everyone knows yet. the phlebotomists are all actually vampires or working for vampires. Well, there's, there's no other a, reason to become one. Isn't there that thing in Silicon Valley where rich old people are paying young people for their blood to cycle it through the old person? <laughs> I lines? wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> rich people do weird things. That's not, no, that's not even like kooky, goofy weird. That's like, fuck, that's. Fucking that's creepy. you have too much money, weird. <laughs> that's like, that, yeah, that's like bordering on dystopia. Like, oh, why do I even need sure. to ask? Maybe I'll just kidnap. <laughs> like, yeah. I'll just hook up like eight different people because, like, yeah. how many weeks? How many weeks do you have to go in between giving blood? It's like oh six God. or eight weeks, right? It's so you like have one person walker. so that you can get a new pint of blood each week, and you just rotate through each one. You know, and imagine then by that, the time you get back to the first one, it's been eight weeks. You do a reverse dog walker where it's the old person has a bunch of tubes and the eight young people are walking in front of them. See, I'm just imagining Bill Gates with like eight people hooked up to him, but they're all at various stages of like being passed out because they've given so much blood. So like <laughs> some are like walking, but others are just being like dragged on the sidewalk as he's like heading into Microsoft. And he's this not actually like Mad Max. 
Well, he's, he's not removing any of the blood, so he just keeps bulking oh, up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bill Gates would get super ripped. He's already on that Illuminati blood diet, so it doesn't matter. So, <laughs> Calvin would call the Ghostbusters. James would call his dad. I think I would probably call Harvard. Get their science Ooh. department in on this. Be like, yo, I, I will give this to you instead Fuck. of Yale if you name a building after me. <laughs> oh, that's good, actually. That I can appreciate. What's yeah. the number for Harvard? <laughs> it's online. <laughs> Call Harvard. Hello? Yes, is this Harvard? I, I'll just call it you... Mr. Harvard, and Mr. Harvard will let me <laughs> Mr. Have a Harvard. <laughs> no, 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 no. Mr. Harvard's my father. <laughs> he's he's like, a, it's like a Walt Disney where they just have Mr. Harvard's frozen head like operating D2L <laughs> underneath the uh, campus. <laughs> he takes like random incoming phone calls. That'd be perfect. <laughs> He'll randomly just route a phone call or an email to himself and respond. Yeah, he's just fucking with people. There uh, you go. Classic. So All right, so what is this rant that you yes, have to I have, do? Yes, I have a rant I need to make, and I understand that nothing will come of it, and it has no significance on the entire planet whatsoever, but I mm. need, need to make it. So, have either of you gentlemen seen the Flash TV show? No. Uh-oh. Does this have to do with someone leaving? Yep. Oh, I heard about Tread this. Carefully. I saw this. <laughs> I, I am, see, and that's, that's why it's a rant that makes no sense. Um... I am disappointed in the fact that the actor who played Ralph Dibney, Elongated Man, has been removed from the show, not mm -hmm. because I think he was right in making those tweets. He clearly wasn't. They were bad tweets, bad ideas. They were bad. However, his in character's entire arc in the season he was introduced was, being, was about being given second chances and allowing people to change... And the yeah. actor himself had said, uh, to my knowledge, the tweets were all at least, like, five years old. And the actor had said, like, a month ago, hey, I know these are out there. I, they, I was a different person then. I understand how problematic they are now. And if I could take it back, I would. In a similar situation to James Gunn, when yeah. James Gunn's tweets were unearthed from years ago. The only difference is James Gunn was a billions-making director... And this actor is a bit as a second string character on a TV show, and I I don't think it's fair to give one the second chance and not the other. Yeah, I mean, I guess really then the discussion just comes to down to that idea of second chances. Like, what what does that entitle entail these second chances? Because if they got off like scot free on something years ago, should they not be punished still because they? they could say they learned, but if they never actually got punished, does that mean they really did learn? Or if it was so long ago, can you like, is there kind of like a statute of limitations on this sort of stuff? I think that is definitely one of the new discussions we're having to have, especially yeah. now that social media and the internet has been around long enough that these things are popping up because in the early two thousands or even in the mid, mid te uh, teens and stuff, no. um, the internet hadn't been around long enough for this stuff to come back and bite people that there wasn't like such hard fast record i mean you could have had interviews and news broadcasts of stuff on tape and that did get some people um but, but for the most part there wasn't just this public record that everyone had access to and could see the dumb mistakes that you made so i i really don't know how i stand on this yeah. whole debate of should they be given those second chances or should they um, like, as you were saying, uh, people grow and change. Um, should you judge people for what they said five years ago, 10 years ago, where's that hard limit? As you said, like what makes um, James Gunn getting off Scott free just because he's like more well known and does more things than just some random person. I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah. And, like, I can definitely understand, like, oh, he made these tweets two days ago. Like, yeah, that's completely valid mm. to remove him. That's not cool. And he made it currently. But he was hired by CW well after, the like, years and years after those tweets had been made. And it, it's kind of on them to not back check it if they're going to be this, act this way about it. But, yeah, it's, that that's my rant. That's the entirety of it. I think... I, I don't know. It's, like, tough, because, like, 
it becomes like one of those awkward things where obviously because they made those tweets that like, and it's so hard on the internet to know whether or not somebody is actually being serious. Mm-hmm. Um, like whether these things were made as like more of a joke or more of like a, like a joke with quotation marks like around it. Um, so I don't know. I'm looking at some of the tweets now and some of them are just like, if they're jokes, they're like, some of them I think are kind of funny. Others are just not like, Good. Well, what's this guy's name um, again? I, I haven't read any of his. Tweets. Hartley Sawyer and that that actress, like uh, who did it, is Sky Jackson. She was like a Disney Channel actress and stuff. And I guess I don't know. My question would be like, do these people who are outing other people think that at some point they themselves won't be outed, and how will they respond yeah. to it? Yeah, that's, that's like such a dangerous thing to be out there outing this stuff because I do feel like. There have been a lot of people that are like, aha, gotcha. And then everyone's yeah. just like, uh, you have the same exact thing. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. a really good example of that is the movie Tropic Thunder. Every few <laughs> years, someone will show the picture of Robert Downey Jr. from that movie in blackface and say, look at Robert Downey Jr. He did blackface. Let's cancel him or shut him down or whatever. And everybody else who's aware of the movie is like, uh, that was a satirical commentary on how bad and horrendous blackface is. Or, yeah, well, it's like, and the movie, it's it's that, and it's also just making fun. The, the whole point is that Robert Downey Jr.'s character in that movie is like a self-involved actor who is so, like, up his own ass that he skips over, like, he's one of those, like, self-righteous, self-pretentious Hollywood actors who you'd think would be, like, offended by blackface, but because he's so, quote-unquote, like, dedicated to the craft, he, like, just totally blows past it. And I don't know, like... That stuff is, it, it'd be one thing if like, to be fair, to an and to an extent, it's like, okay, you put these things out online, like, now we know, like, there's no reason to share some of this shit. Yeah. But like, just know that there are people who are going to be combing through your socials if you reach a certain level and during moments like this, where that shit is going to come up. But at the same time, I don't think finding out somebody has said offensive things like six years ago is necessarily like reason for recourse and getting them fired from a job. Like, I don't, I don't know if that's like, if they were actively encouraging violence, like actively, like I fucking hate these people, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't really seem like any of these tweets are doing that. I mean, some of them, I'm looking at some of these ones and some of them, some of them are pretty bad. What's the most recent one? Yeah, some of them are. What year is the most recent one from? uh, 2014, I think. uh, Most of these I'm seeing are 2014. Not to say that does doesn't that excuses it. Yeah. Um, just because of something was older, I don't think that's really an excuse out of stuff. Um, Mm -hmm. but I do I do kind of agree with what you're saying, James. In the whole like there, I feel like there is a time like. If this person is still doing this stuff, obviously, then that's who their character truly is. Yeah. And then maybe if there's going to be repercussions, well, then they brought them on themselves and everyone's free to do whatever they want. But if, if like, in this instance, if he truly did never post anything like this since 2014, everyone who's interacted with him has had nothing wrong, he's never done anything like this in public again, then it's like, well you want people to change, but you, but then that you still come back and like hit them with all this stuff when they expose themselves as being like, yeah, I messed up. I'm a different person. No one's ever going to say that then no one's ever going to like (laughs) say like, Oh, I learned, I grew. No, they're just going to hide that stuff away and be terrified of other people. Well, that's what I do think there is like there, there, there has to be some sort of balance there. Yeah. Well, that's what made it so ironic was the uh, character arc literally was he used to be a detective on the police force, falsified evidence for a guy he, like, he thought the guy was guilty and was going to get off, so he falsified evidence, which got him fired. And the Flash's whole interaction with him in the beginning was, you're a bad person, you'll never change, and having to come around and realize that, oh, hey, this person has changed and can be a better person. So it's just very ironic that it's playing out in reverse. 
social media, especially fucking Twitter, is not the place to engage in these like ideological crusades. Like especially Twitter, it's just so. Tell that to Twitter. You know, it, yeah, it, it, <laughs> Twitter, like Twitter is like. I would almost say it's on par with like, like 4 chan in terms of certain levels of toxicity. Like it At is times, just, yeah, no. for sure. It's just not. It's not helpful. Like it's it's fine. Like other social media, if you want to see like little bite sized stuff, but I just feel like it's so fragmented and fractured that just by the very nature, like you really can't have any serious discussion and. That's where you get this kind of culture where it's just like instead of actual discussion of the issues and the things that are being presented, it's usually just people are either condemned or written off with like a snarky tweet. And that's like it. And it, it, it just is so odd. Um, like far be it for me. I'm not I'm not going to tell anyone like how to use uh, their social medias or whatever. But yeah. I, I don't know. I just I just don't I I, I don't like Twitter at all. Uh Ugh. Well, yeah. That's, yeah. It, it it's just like, especially because like now too with all this, it is interesting because I feel like now that we're in a way that social media for the past couple months, both with the pandemic and now these kinds of like the protests and the riots and stuff like that, now that we almost kind of need it to be something more than just like a platform to share like goofs food pictures or memes or whatever now that we actually need it to be a serious like vector of information a lot of the flaws are really highlighted like you never get the full story you can't trust most videos online because you never know when someone started filming you never know when they edited something out when you don't know filming when they stop filming, you don't know like what someone is omitting, where their motivations are. So it's like it's just it's difficult to gauge like reality almost when you're on social media because it is so inherently fractured and, and fragmentary. And it, it just makes actual conversation like very, very difficult. Um, I think Reddit is a little bit better in that sense. Um it, a little bit like it the worst thing about, yeah the worst thing about reddit is just moderators who get like like a bug up their ass and will just delete like whole swaths of things because they don't agree with it which is like ridiculous um but i do think reddit is objectively at least a better has more potential for discussion than twitter does i would True. say i can agree with that <clears throat> just because it is being like somebody is moderating it and trying to like Albeit they still have their human viewpoint that's going to skew it, but they're trying to keep it civil and contained. Mm -hmm. um, I think the, another problem that we're seeing with this use of social media as a vector for serious discussion is uh, the numbing, the uh, o overexposure. <laughs> that yeah. I've got, I could probably count like four people whose posts I've seen more of in the last weak than anybody else in the last year mm -hmm. and it's all this all of them are the same messages which to be fair they're trying to be helpful they're trying to be supportive they're trying to be good people and be supportive and share good information share useful information but because there's so many of them all doing it at the same time and on an almost hourly basis it kind of gets to a point of, okay, it's another one, whatever. Yeah. Well, there's something to me that's so kitschy and impotent about social media, like activism. And I know this is like a tired topic, but I do, I do feel like that, like this is just hot. That's why I got off Facebook again and Instagram and Twitter and all that shit. Cause I just, I can't handle the, like, I don't understand really and genuinely the posts that I would see where it's like, if you don't support this, then, well, you know, you can just, you're not my friend anymore. And it's like, really? That's where you're drawing the line. And this is where the friendship ends. Like here, it wasn't three years like ago someone... when I killed your cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I, it's just, and, yeah, I, I agree. That's kind of why for my social media is like, I have a Facebook, but I honestly, I don't think I've posted a status update on Facebook in six years. 
Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't I, I don't like people's posts. I don't comment. I've only recently, honestly, got back into kind of very quickly scrolling across the front page. I don't even like read it every now and then. I'll just kind of like flip through because I'll see stuff from like family and some of my other friends that I don't see. And it's kind of like fun. It is kind of fun to see like some of their posts, what they're up to. But I, I'm more of a fan of Instagram because you mm. can just post pictures. And I feel like it kind of gets around some of that stuff you're talking about. Um, but, but the problem is now people use Instagram where they just post a picture or it's just text. And it's just like, well, just, mm. just post that. It's just like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I like Instagram when people just post I, genuinely post photos of what's going yeah. on in their life in like a small little caption. And it's just like, oh, cool. And it's like a way to share photos. Um, it just, I, I just don't I, even, I just don't even touch Twitter. I, it's just like, I think, yeah, go ahead, yeah. James. Speaking of that text thing, that was one of the things that got me off Instagram recently was like last week when all the shit like blew up, um, basically. I was seeing um because everyone was posting like all that shit, which is like fine, whatever. Like I I don't think it means anything. And by that I mean you're posting, like I'm glad you're circulating information that somebody is going to like tap through on your Instagram story and not read it all. I'm glad like you got your rocks off that way. Fantastic for you. Um but Are you a little jaded, as far James? As, I well, I as far as I see it, if you're not actually out there, you're not doing anything. Like, like, if yeah, you're not, I, I would if, agree with that. It's easy yeah. to click a button on a computer and be like, yeah, I support you as opposed to look someone in the face who may not agree with you or is like, uh, like not at the same level as you look them mm -hmm. in the face and still tell them that message. There are, there are two different things. Yeah. And I, I remember one thing that I saw specifically was this thing that it was, it was like what you were talking about, Calvin, this like text wall that kept getting like, I saw it on a bunch of stories and it was, what it, it was one of the reasons why I left. Cause I was like, I can't, I, this is ridiculous. Um, it was basically, I, I can't remember the exact wording of it. I think I actually saved it to my computer, but it was something like, uh, really your, uh, you're posting pictures of food and photos of you at the beach right now. Why don't you take a step back and look at the real estate that you're occupying on the internet and think about how you could use it a little bit better right now. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> like yes. you're telling people how to use the internet and you're posting this garbage. Like it's yeah. so ridiculous. Like, like I can kind of understand the sentiment, but at yeah. the same time, you're, you're right. Like, I mean, it's like, I don't know. It's like, motherfucker, it's my computer. <laughs> it's my account. Like, and that's just like, I, I think that's really what drives me out of social media so much is when we have these like big events that happen and there's just that hive mentality that swells yeah. up yeah. where everybody is posting about the same shit. And it happened when COVID first broke out. And then it happened again, like a week ago. And it's just like, so I, I can't handle that what it's you're just saying is much. you need to cull your friends lists not <laughs> destroy your social media i not i don't know because like the thing is like i follow like on instagram i followed way more people who weren't my friends than i did who were because i followed a lot of like art accounts and shit like that mm. i followed a lot of like concept artists and writers and philosophy stuff but even they started pumping out all of this like regurgitated shit and i was like i can't get away from it like i just want <laughs> to follow look. you i want to look at your I, cool I, drawings yeah i i want to look at your art and i'm glad you know what i am glad that you have the that you feel strongly enough about something to post about it i guess that is a step forward but i have a feeling that that is all you're going to do um, I am not an activist by any nature, so I, I don't have a right to criticize anyone on their level of activism, but it's that kind of subtle hypocrisy where it's like, you should be doing something. And it's like, yeah, so should you. If you care that much, then get off your fucking ass and like schlep down to Milwaukee and make a sign and go protest. Like, yeah, I or like I'm put your not... money where your mouth is and donate to all <laughs> these different things. And yeah, like... it's like if you really want to do that, then do it. Don't just like repost and repost and repost and then be like, why isn't anything getting done? It's like, cause you're not doing anything. That's why like you're not doing 
anything. You are just like like that Instagram blackout thing. It's like, what the hell yeah. is that? How does that do? How does that solve anything? We already okay. know what's going on. The <laughs> thing, the thing that gets me is with the wall of text stuff. To bring that back around, is I think it is hilarious when people use different social me like mix their social media platforms. Like, I'm going to share this Tumblr thing on Facebook, or mm. I'm going to uh, share this Instagram photo with a wall of text to get around their character limits. Like, okay, mm. you, you're just breaking this to be what you want it to be and not using the tool the way it's intended. I don't, I don't mind that if it's like, if it's kind of just like someone reposting something funny from Tumblr onto Instagram, but I agree with what you're saying where it's like, if it's just clearly to like word vomit in a, in a, an application that won't let you do that, like that yeah. I agree with. Cause I see that on, that's on Twitter a lot where it's just like people post like Tumblr shit or they'll literally just post like word document type stuff and it gets around the character limit and stuff like that. And it's just like, so you are admitting by doing that, that this app is garbage for what you want to use it for. You're just getting around it by doing that, which is You're admitting smart you're on the bad one at hand. using Facebook. Yeah, it's like, it's like, it's whatever. Like, again, I'm coming from a position where it's like, don't tell me how to use the internet. So for me to tell, I'm not telling anyone. I'm just saying that some of the stuff I've, I've seen is just seems Annoying. patently ridiculous. And especially like... Do you guys see, have you guys heard about that Capitol Hill autonomous zone no. that got set up in Seattle? I've protests? heard of it. I don't know what it is. I haven't it heard of it. Like, from what I've gathered, protesters and like maybe Antifa, but that's like hazy because no one fucking knows what Antifa is, I guess. They're like the ghost in the machine. They come in and out and whatever, but like they they barricaded themselves inside of like seven or eight city blocks. And they're forming like what they call an autonomous like commune. Um, and they're it sounds like trying to essentially make like a little mini state. But the problem is, is that they don't have any cops. Like they got all their food stolen by homeless people. I think I saw that somewhere. Where is this? This Seattle. is in Seattle. Huh. Um, I'm pulling up some news articles. They're calling themselves like anarchists, but they're buying food from like the surrounding area. Like, it's, it's very odd. And I think, if anything, to me, what the nice thing is, like, I genuinely, like I've said before, I believe in this, like, movement. I believe in the idea of, of acknowledging, like, systemic problems and working as a collective to change those. But I also think that one of the wonderful things for me is that this whole thing has highlighted, like, the problems with some of, some more admittedly, like, left-leaning type people where they have all these great ideas, but they have no plans and no idea how to apply them. Like the yeah. fact that Minneapolis, like, um, cause I know when they say defund the police, like it's people love to run with that. And they're like, Oh, they want to ab abolish all police. It's like, no, 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 that's not, that's not what they mean. But it sounds like yeah. Minneapolis is going through with that. Like, they yeah, they, the, <laughs> the city council a veto proof majority of the city council has, um, has, pledged that they will vote to to disband i think the police department <laughs> which, which i don't i don't know if which i don't know if that means they're going to um completely disband it because um there have been cases before where um police departments have been like involved in corruption scandals where the city council completely wiped out the police department and made everybody reapply for their jobs and oh. then they vetted everybody and went through that process. So I don't know if it's going to be something like that. And then yeah. they're also going to end up defunding the police a little bit. So they're more, more narrow focused, or if they're going to straight up disband the police department <laughs> in Minneapolis and try and replace it with other social works See, and stuff. I, hope I really don't the, know. I'd have to read about it. I hope it's the latter because I so badly want Minneapolis to turn into Detroit from Robocop. Where it's <laughs> privately subsidized. Okay. Do you want hey, that to happen just because please. you want RoboCop? Do you just uh, want a it, RoboCop? It'd be so funny because that's the thing is like people. Yeah, it's like, except for the people living oh, there. Oh yeah, but you, you voted for it. Like, well, except for the people who didn't vote for it, but then like you know, move whatever, leave your home behind, <laughs> idiots. <laughs> like, is um, that part of the problem? Like that people who are 
uh, less wealthy or poor. They're just poor. That's that's the word I want. The, they're poor. The poor people <laughs> are unable to physically move because they can't afford to. Yeah, like yeah. Yeah, Isn't that, you would, I thought you, that was part of the problem. Yeah, I mean, like, and I get, I get the intention behind it, and I do agree. Like, I don't think our military, like our police, need like one. They don't need like APCs. <laughs> yeah, they don't need that. armored vehicles. It, and yeah, all like stuff. yeah, we we don't like if if I learned anything from like watching those riots on TV last weekend, it's like holy shit, these guys literally look like Spartan twos, like walking down yeah. the street. This is. Yeah. Insane. Yeah, like, I, I did see a good post that said that that showed a picture of the police and all that gear and a picture of like nurses wearing garbage bags for protective equipment. And it was just like we were more pre- prepared to handle riots and looting than we were a pandemic. And it's a it's a pretty valid point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I also I saw mean, one like, that was um, yeah. the oh shoot. Uh, I, I haven't looked this up to check if it's actually true or not, but apparently like tear gas is banned by the geneva convention it is banned by the chem it is banned by the what? chemical weapons treaty of like the 90s maybe the geneva convention but i looked it up as well because i wanted to see if it was accurate uh so it was banned by the international chemical weapons ban of like the 80s or 90s um it made a ban of using all chemical weapons and since tear gas is a chemical it is classified as a chemical weapon so therefore in the in the according to these treaties it is not to be used in warfare so people like to jump on that like oh we wouldn't even use it in war how can we use it on our people i don't know i i feel like yeah. the police's current use of it is maybe a little too liberal and yeah. the f- when they shoot canisters into people's faces yeah that's there's problems there um <laughs> yeah but, but it's like it's hot, hot. I, I don't know it's like I mean, tear gas is, it can hurt people, but when the alternative is the rubber bullets and beating people or just opening fire with live ammunition, I'd rather get tear gas. Yeah. See, I think we should just bring back like water cannons. Like, that'll, like that'll, that'll mess you up too. Yeah, that'll that'll wall, like, break your bones your or throw skin. you against the wall. Uh, like high enough pressure to push somebody back, but not like fire hose where it's going to like sear off half your face. If it can it move a person, it will flay your flesh. <laughs> think so? I, what? Yes. I, I, yeah, that's fair. Tell me I saw, uh, I remember trying to come up with alternative solutions. <laughs> Who I remember seeing this like documentary years ago. This was like a decade ago, probably. It was on like future weapons and stuff. And I think it was... Mm for the military and stuff. But one of the things they had that they demonstrated was for the, the um, was more for riot control. It was this thing they mounted on a Humvee and it was basically like a giant microwave emitter. And oh. what you did is you shot it at people and it works like a microwave where it would like vibrate the water molecules and heat you up. So anyone in the path of it, their skin, the, just the very outer layer, it would just be incredibly irritating. And they had these like special forces, like all of these guys, and they had them stand in this area and they hit them with it. And not one of them could remain in that spot for more than like two seconds. They were like, nope, I'm out of here. <laughs> Good grief. I, well, I, so I've got a question if it's talking about this stuff, because this has been happening more and more. What do you guys think about what has been happening with like? This is always a top, like a subtopic when these kinds of like uh, upheavals happen. But what do you guys think about the statue stuff? The Confederate like, statues? You... No, not the Confederate statues. Like I saw, I've been seeing posts where I don't know how I, I, I don't feel strongly about this one as I do some others, but like they decapitated like in Boston, the uh, Christopher Columbus, Christopher Columbus, which is like, whatever. Like I can, I can agree that he, I mean, Columbus kind of sucks and is overblown yeah. by our history. So I don't yeah. care about him. <laughs> but like in Britain, they were like defacing statues of like Winston Churchill and like Kings and Queens and things like that, which is like, like why that, I don't know like i i, I like, don't like there's there's a photo that like it's taken of the winston churchill statue where it like it's spray painted on there like churchill was racist or awful right like something racist or yeah. whatever and and like there was even someone on twitter who was like a student or an employee at a royal art museum and she was like of those snarky twitter people i hate and she was like uh she was like 
yeah, you know, it really sucks seeing people throw paint on these statues. It would be a real shame if they threw such and such chemical on there because then the damage would be irreversible. And it's like, what what are you doing? Like, how is that how is that helping anyone or anything? Like, isn't isn't Churchill and isn't Churchill Antifa? Isn't he what you guys like? I, I <laughs> yeah. don't understand. The, there, I'm getting mixed messages from yeah i don't know about that like, i'd have to hear i'd have to, i'd have to hear people's reasonings for their defacing those statues i really don't know um yeah so i guess i can't really comment on that stuff i my comment is yeah churchill was pretty anti-fascist as far as i understood um <laughs> and that he was also of a time period that uh, based on my knowledge uh, that was the same time period where America had Martin Luther King Jr. going around doing his thing. Uh, oh. Was Churchill around in the 60s? He, might have, he might have been. I, I think he might have oh, no, spoken was that 60, oh, What am I thinking of now? Because I thought there was... Oh, no, sorry. not. It was just before. It okay. was just before. Because yeah. I. Uh, it's like Anne Frank and Martin Luther King Jr. were alive at the same time. But well, King yeah, was after alive, the war. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. That's, that's my mix-up. But like... Churchill was just before that happened, when he was in power. So I think you can, from a historical viewpoint, acknowledge he wouldn't have the best views. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. was a product of his society and time period. Yeah, and it, um, I just like... I, 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 would, think, I would agree, yeah. but I would say time is not an excuse. Um, just because, like, this idea of, oh, it was a hundred years ago, they didn't know any better. I don't think you need to know better to treat people as equals. Um, so I, I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily that's agree fair. with the whole like, oh, that's just the way the time was, and that's an excuse. I, 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 I have a hard time with that. Um, I think you can't necessarily judge them. I, I really don't know where I stand on that. Um, but I guess I wouldn't, I would say you can't judge them necessarily to the standards we hold today, but at the same time, that's, doesn't mean they're excused from their beliefs and actions. Yeah. Cause I, I, I'd, I'd actually agree with that. Cause I guess like, to be fair, if you use the, well, it's just different time. You could say the same thing for like Hitler, like, oh, it was just different time. Like he had no idea what, how bad he was or blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, you could say that for Tilda Hahn or whoever, um, Genghis Khan, like, but I'd, I'd also say, like, it, it really does depend because who's to say that 50 years from now, like, the way we talk about certain things won't be viewed as, like, horribly offensive or outdated or crude, vulgar. Like, we just don't know. But at the same time, I, again, I, I would agree, like, human decency is non-temporal. Like, you should, as a good person, just be able to treat people with common like courtesy regardless um mm -hmm. of the time or the place um and yeah i i i guess i don't know i i, I have an issue with like that statue stuff like even the even to a degree like certain confederate ones like because i don't hold any love for the confederacy at all but just as fragments of like history i just don't know if just blotting it out is yeah no I, but yeah, i think there's I, a difference between glorifying and just and acknowledging and i think statues and stuff lean more into the glorifying than acknowledging this history and i would i would say that removing these statues is not erasing history nobody's going into textbooks and being like oh these people didn't like these people were like such and such, or they just, or just mm. avoiding people from textbooks and all this stuff. It's, I, I think I would agree with removing statues because what country honors the losing side of their civil war? Well, like, I, I would, I, I, it'd be, I would say it's, it'd be the same as if on the East Coast in these cities, we had statues to King George and the British everywhere. Yeah. And if we and if we took them down, would people would as many people be complaining? Oh, but what about the loyalists that fought in the in the revolution? What about the loyalists who were loyal to their king and country? And it was it was it's an issue of being proud in your kingdom because that's the argument that a lot of people claim for the Confederate state 
statutes is, oh, it's a state's rights issue. It's the idea of um, being proud that these people stood up for their states. And it's like, well, yes, but I, I also reject the idea that it was anything other than the fact that the slavery was at the heart of it. That is what it was about. It was a state's rights issue because the government was like, no slaves. What well, was like getting I I iffy on the slaves thing. And the South was like, yeah, no, you can't tell us to not enslave these people. And that's why they broke away. So it's like, yeah, it's a state's rights issue, but it's a state's rights issue about enslaving people. Could so, you s say the same thing about like the American flag, that it's a flag of secession and slavery? even though it wasn't explicitly stated. And the same thing with George Washington and statues of Thomas Jefferson, where those are statues of men who not only owned slaves, but encouraged a, uh, like a secession from the country that put them there in the first place. Yes, uh, I would be willing to, I would be willing to have that debate, but mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, it's somewhat hypocritical, but I would say that the difference is that um, they stand for the country as it is now and that we won. Yeah. Yeah. Did we find any more information about that uh, enclave that Seattle started? Oh, because Cal, you oh, said you were looking I, that up. I, I did look up a brief article, but I already moved past it. But it seems like um, it was just a bunch of protesters that surrounded like a six block area around the Capitol in the East Precinct, and the cops like abandoned that precinct, and they said that they're only going to go into that area for 911 calls and they're not going to just be like have a presence there. Wow. wow. What used to be the Seattle Police Department on the corner of 12th and Pine now reads the Seattle People Department. Okay. <laughs> no. Nah, good for good for you guys setting up your own anarchist commune in a capitalist state that is supporting you. Good job. Good job. We'll okay. see if it works. We'll see if it works. I, I do want to maybe maybe they can, uh, you know, whatever, keep it going. But uh, eh, I, I don't know what setting up like an autonomous commune in the I, middle of like Seattle is, is going to accomplish. But I do eh. have to ask, do you think Portland is going to get jealous because Portland <laughs> is supposed to be the one that keeps it weird and they didn't do it first? Oh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, wait, hold on. Holding. What are we holding for? Uh, uh, said the, the Communist Party of the United States or any successors of such party, regardless of the assumed name, whose object or purpose is to overthrow the government of the United States, blah, 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 or the government of any political subdivision therein by force and violence, are not entitled to rights, privileges, and immunities attendant upon legal bodies created under the jurisdiction of the laws of the United States. So that means that if they are like, if they ever come out and say that they're like a commune, like an actual commune, they're technically absolved of legal rights under the uh, law, wow. which is interesting. Which uh, that that would suck, um, but nah. Okay, let's help some people. Uh, so, how to be a better buddy? Where we give partially comedic, partially real advice, and uh, like when you fr ask your friends for advice, it's not our fault if it's bad advice. Uh, first. Question we have to we're gonna quick get through this because we are getting a little close to time mm -hmm. uh, The question from Yahoo answers I did a mix this week Yahoo and Reddit Yahoo answers uh, What's it mean? Further details when a friend <laughs> says you use too much profanity uh, Interesting So the question is what does it mean when a friend asks you or tells you that you swear too much? Presumably I feel like it means you swear too much. I think it's it's probably a sign that it probably obviously makes them uh, uncomfortable. Um, and you should probably have a uh, discussion about that. Hopefully not to use profanity at them, but hopefully to discuss it. <laughs> <laughs> See, we can only go. Now, the exact wording of the question was... The start of a quest, the, the further details was half of a sentence. When a friend says you use too much profanity, blank, no question mark, no period. Which makes me think, instead of them continuing to ask, say, when a friend says you use too much profanity, how do you best approach them about it? Or how do you, how do I stop? Or what words are acceptable for me to use? I think you have too much, like, you have a too high of opinion of those using Yahoo Answers. I no, feel I like think they, the person that was, was killed. Full stop of their thought. 
I think the person was murdered in the middle of their question. Oh my god. So, um... No, we, should, we shouldn't ask the police to look into it, based on what's going on now, but somebody should. <laughs> Somebody's... We got... <laughs> this is... I think... You know what I think we're gonna see? I think we're gonna see a beautiful era, a rebirth of the gumshoe detectives, of private eyes. People don't oh, trust yeah. the system anymore. God damn, we're gonna get, get you. Get yeah, cool hell hat. yeah, get your trench coats and cigarettes, everybody. We're gonna go solve Ooh. some mysteries. Our second question this week is rat problem. This comes from Reddit. My friend ate a baby rat and he wants me to eat it. What should I do? Whoa, whoa, whoa. He ate a baby, baby rat? rat? Like, like raw? He just, like, what? downed it? Or I don't was know. it, like, a delicacy? I, like... I would have to assume that it was not I mean, a delicacy. If it's cooked, if it's, if it's, like, cooked and prepared, I'd eat it. Sure. I've eaten raw horse. Oh, how's that? It's really good, actually. <laughs> James, what do you think? Should you eat the rat? Uh, I would maybe try it. I'm not going to eat of it if it's totally raw or like a lot. I'm not eating. I'm not eating raw rat. I'll eat a yeah. cooked rat, but I'm not eating raw now, rat. Here's yeah. the part that concerns me. Uh, my friend ate a baby rat, and he wants me to eat it, but he only makes mention of the one rat. So All right, you're friend... reading too much into these people's grammar. <laughs> well, I am an, I'm an English major. Uh, call 1-800-ENGLISH-MAJORS to help an English major you know. Call back to a prior episode. Um, yes, please, we need donations. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, if your friend wants you to eat a rat, as long as he, like, has enough to share for everybody, like, if he brought enough for everybody in the class. <laughs> Did you bring enough for the class? <laughs> <laughs> well, you better go find some. <laughs> I don't know, like, I guess, like, if he wanted, if it's the same rat, did he, like, cut it in half? Because then, like, that's even less of a problem, quite literally. Yeah. You know, at, le at least not a whole baby rat. I would feel bad that it's a baby, even if it's a rat. I want to know how but... he found one. Like, uh, how often do you find Maybe it was a rats? pet rat. And he maybe he found a them. nest. Oh, yeah. Oh. Maybe he breeds them to eat. But then there's a dark side to that, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's uh, yeah, that's, that's. Maybe he's just a cryptid. Oh shit! He's Fuck. like a chupacabra in a human form. That's like maybe he found a rat king in the basement. Maybe he did. Maybe <laughs> the rat maybe he's trying society. to become the rat king. Maybe that's how oh, you become a rat king. Is you consume. you ate it. You got to eat it. And get its power. Yeah, oh, exactly. Oh, see, I thought it was that the rat society in the basement had to offer up sacrifices every six months in order to maintain their society that's and have rat. a bountiful harvest. That's like something out of like Lovecraft. <laughs> That's uh, he's Lovecraft like their first food. child. <laughs> Our last question for the week uh, from Yahoo Answers again: Why are so few people friendly anymore? Further details: I remember when it was commonplace for people to greet each other in passing or smile at strangers and greet them. Now even neighbors don't speak to each other; they avoid eye contact with strangers, etc. So why aren't people? F uh, why are so few people friendly anymore? I feel like this person lives in a city and not out in the country or in <laughs> rural areas. I feel like, like people are just yeah. like too obsessed and too busy and stuff these days with like what's going on around them that they don't slow down enough to realize there's a world around them. But if you're in a smaller town, I mean, we live in a smaller area and I feel like if I were to walk down the street, people, especially like adults and stuff or older people, they're going to be like, Hey, Good morning. I mean, I, if I go for a walk with my mother on like, uh, we went for a walk the other day on a uh, bike trail. Everyone we passed said good morning. Oh, see, that's nice. I, I don't know. Maybe it's because I live in town, but I feel like, I feel like it's levels of friendliness. Like the less people there are, the more friendly it is. So if you live out in the boonies, everybody's super friendly because they'd rather be your friend than risk your serial killer that hangs out in the area. But like. If you live in town, it gets to be like, hey, polite nods, waves, but no, like, real contact. And when you're in cities, you don't make eye contact with anybody because y everybody might be a serial killer at that point. It's because everyone is. In some way. No, I feel like maybe people feel like they, like, questions like this. It's like people feel like they can't be friendly anymore, or maybe even worse, that they feel like people nowadays are less receptive to a type of friendship. But I I almost think it's the opposite. I think more people than ever want, like, 
to be able to kind of like connect with somebody. And obviously you gotta, you can't just walk up to random people, but like, I, I, I like, you know, nodding or waving to people when I'm like on a walk and stuff like that. And I think, I, cause I know I, I like that. I think a lot of people just kind of want to be like acknowledged, but I think that's all it really takes to be friendly. Yeah. I, I really feel that like the idea that people may not be, like it seems like people aren't as receptive. Mm-hmm. I, I definitely feel like that's a thing, even though they probably are as receptive as ever. So, I don't know. Be friendly, and people will be friendly in return. I think is the model to go with here. I'd agree. You get the you get the friendship that you put into the world. The love you uh, what is it? The love you take is equal to the love you make. That's uh, that's like I a Beatles thing. Yeah. I don't think if you take love... more love from people, that, I think on. it's the more love you make is the love you, you get more make love in return is. The love you make is equal to the love you take. That's it. Okay. There's our advice for this week. If you want advice on something, remember to uh, contact us. Let us know, because we're not psychics yet. (sighs) Not yet. But eventually, once we hit 500 episodes, we get our psychic powers. I looked it up. Someday. Uh, Shouting into the void. Knock this one out quick, James. Uh, We have the same three from last that we were debating over from last week's show notes. Uh, do you still want to do Mark Hamill? Yeah. Do Mark Hamill. Yeah, I think so. Do we say, oh, no, I thought of something, but that kind of thing would get me fired if someone <laughs> heard it 10 years ago. Yeah, don't go with that. <laughs> uh, say, uh, I, I guess just like, uh, I don't know. Say, hey, Mark, uh, I'm rewatching After Our Last Airbender. You were really good in it. I. Okay. Something like that. Where he was really good in it. He was. He, he had like such. Fire Lord? He was yeah, Fire Lord. He, he had such a limited fire. role, but he was so enjoyable. Looking at previous shouting into the voids, the only one that has ever like had anyone actually notice it is the one to Tony Hawk. What he noticed it? Mm-hmm. Not Tony. Oh, Tony wait. Hawk didn't. Tony notice Tony Hawk it. didn't notice it, but ten people did. The person who did notice was Chef Mike, former head chef. Of McDonald's. Oh, that's true. Yeah, Chef, Chef Mike. Mike. Chef Mike did actually like like that tweet, and it was it was simple. It was just spaghetti, and he was like <laughs> like. <laughs> and with that, that wraps another week, gentlemen. Thank you for joining me. It's always a pleasure. Uh, thank you to the Please. band Problem of Interest for allowing us to use their song "Living in the Moment" off the album "Cross Off." Yesterday, you can find them on iTunes and Spotify. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, make sure you review us if that option is available. I checked iTunes for the first time since I put the podcast on iTunes. And we do have one review from two months ago that I neglected to uh, thank. So thank you to iTunes user Multiverse Bracketologist for giving us a good review. I may or may not have a sneaking suspicion of who that is, but... On a completely unrelated note, go check the Super Bracket Bros podcast. They're starting it sounds season like it's two. not an unrelated note. <laughs> they are starting season two, and it's a great lineup. They've got Hercules from the animated Hercules movie in it, and he's seated hey. in the number one spot. So uh, go listen to Super Bracket Bros. Oh my god. Yeah. Your words. Make sure you review us. Uh, the more you review, the more you spread word of mouth, the more people find us, and can help us get better because you know either we get better or we don't but it's sure more fun to get better with an audience you can email us if you need advice super brack gonna cut that you can email you just call us the super yeah yeah (laughs) cutting that yeah you're not cutting that i'm gonna keep bringing it up Hey, remember that time you called us the Super Bracket Brothers podcast? <laughs> I remember that time you called us the Super Bracket Brothers podcast. <laughs> it was pretty need, recently. If you need advice, you can email us at betterbuddiescast at gmail.com. We're also on the social media. Uh, oh, I almost did it again! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad I edit these. Uh, you can also find Whoa, us on social lame. media, Better Buddies <laughs> Cast. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we're also Better Budcast at Better Budcast on Twitter. Use the hashtag Better Buddies when you tweet, tweet about the show. Uh, please share with a friend. Uh, we're over the hump in terms of 
a year long, where you got 20 weeks to go ish. Yeah, 20 weeks until we hit a year. So uh, let's get those numbers up, people. Come on. And uh, last but not least, be a better buddy. Hell yeah. Oh, Christ. (laughs) (laughs) That was great. Seriously, though, Super Bracket Bros, their lineup is amazing. They got Venom seated in number two spot. Is it just like debating like their favorite ones? Oh, who would win in a fight? And they, it's like March Madness brackets. Oh, that's awesome. You seriously should go give season one a listen. Uh, James, I am, I am in a tizzy. Why is that? So I went to uh, rinse my dishes and put them in the dishwasher after dinner, Mm -hmm. and there was water on the floor in front of the sink. And were you now, in? Are you in socks? I am in socks. Oh no, RJ! Not, and it's no. just the tips of the socks. Oh god! It's not even the whole sock; just the tips of the socks are wet, and it's it's so annoying. Fucking miserable. And I didn't that have is... time to change socks. 